Hi guys, today we're going to react to Money Game Part 2 by Ren. <laughs> Buy me a coffee request from Robert M. Thank you, Robert, for requesting this trilogy. Thank you, Robert. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, Ren wrecked us with Part 1, so let's see what happens with Part 2. Strange time we're living in panic and hysteria Poor man learn the rich man don't care for your narcissist mindset spread like malaria Sit back and watch the show America Britain split through fickle shit A government of hypocrites These counterfeit politicians sit in parliament Not adequate Come on. Needlessly bleeding resources all dry Turn a blind eye if it means a pay rise Oh what a shame it would be I would die If number 10 Downing Street burned in a fire Only joking, only messing, don't be stressing I'm a peaceful adolescent, there's no need to be unpleasant Write my thesis in a rhyme scheme to analyse the brain While my finger's on the trigger of a money game oh. Rain, 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 rain The storm it comes our way And no surprise to distorted lies Poisoning the veins But we die to point the blame, 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 blame It's easier to blame We point the mirror at ourselves We're all part of this whole money game He kept the Pink Floyd rhythm, what we noted in part one. And it's amazing because we talked about hate, but he, he, he puts in fear and hysteria. Those are all emotional tools. And he says about the politicians that they're not adequate. Who are they to run things? And the part where he says we are accountable for it as well. It's not just we're just part of the game. We're complicit. We are complicit victims. We didn't touch on it in the previous episode, but it's complacency. We agree to be governed by uh, sinister mm. intellectuals. And that's, uh, that's a really, very strong message. I'm really loving this. The word he used is panic, panic and hysteria. Sorry, panic, panic and hysteria, yeah. yeah. Which has a slightly, you know, different yeah, yeah. meaning. Sorry, but, yeah. panic and hysteria, yeah. The one line that hit hard with me as far as uh, the state of the world is um, narcissist mindset spread like malaria. A lot of this, you know, what we've talked about in part one, and we've talked about this on other episodes, is this phenomenon of virtue signaling. That's what I think that line is about because it's spreading so fast and it's helping spread the panic, the hysteria, the hate. And people who partake in it don't actually realize that they're part of the problem and have no interest in fixing it because these are people who don't want any mistakes or wrongdoings shown to them that they're doing. And anyone to tell them that they're doing wrong, it's like we cannot be criticized. And that's kind of where we are today with everything. So yeah. as far as everything that he's talking about that's coming from the government and from the higher ups and all that, those are problems that we might in some way, you know, be able to deal with because I don't know, maybe the revolution or maybe through the power of voting and through, you know, democracy, stuff like that. But this narcissism Narcissism that is growing like malaria, this virus that has infected the human race. I'm not sure how, how we're going to get out of that one. It became ingrained in our psyche. People, they don't know that they're doing it, but lifestyle trumps accountability. They will see themselves as social justice warriors just by seeing themselves like that. It'll make them feel better, but not noticing that they're uh, uh, texting hate comments on YouTube using an instrument that was built through suffering, you know, in sweatshops and, and cobalt mines. They're not even aware of it. They're wearing clothes that are made by suffering. They're, they're, they're eating food that was made with suffering of others. They're not aware of it because it's their lifestyle. It's what they've become accustomed to, but it doesn't matter as long as they perceive themselves as virtuous. And I think this is a big part of, of, uh, of Ren's message because he talks about blame and the people who, who engage in virtue signaling are more concerned with pointing the finger at someone else than actually taking some of the blame on themselves and working to fix the problem. There's, they have no interest in fixing a problem. They nope. just want to point the finger at someone else to feel better about themselves. To feel significant. Yeah, um, it's yeah. and, and we, we've talked about uh, uh, Ren's approach and how he's uh, you know a mind hacker or a brain hacker or whatever we said, but mind hacker is probably a better way to put it. Um, and there's a line here that says, you know, write my thesis in a rhyme scheme to analyze the brain. Yeah, he says it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, Mind in you, rhymes. it is followed, but it is followed by while my fingers on the trigger of a money game. 
So at the same time, he's taking some blame for this because he's also part of the machine because he's a mm-hmm. musician who's trying to sell records, who's trying to sell singles, who's trying to make money, um, you know, to, to, yeah. to keep rolling along. So I, I love how he points the finger at himself as well as others. Well, yeah. you know, doing what he does. And and I think that if if what we've experienced from him so far is any indication, he is, uh, well, well, will possibly create some change. Yeah. You know, I love that he used the word thesis, something that he's been contemplating and thinking about for probably for years. And he is found because he's an artist, because he knows how to talk to the subconscious. He found a way to convey it in a digestible manner. He writes his thesis with rhymes. He's a, a student of humanity and yeah. yeah, and he's worked out some things and yeah. he's putting it into his music to get it out there. So that's very cool. Yeah. This old money game. Mm-hmm. Money is a game and the ladder we climb Turns a saint into a sinner with his finger in crime I'll break uh, it down for you motherfuckers line by line This is business economics in a nursery rhyme uh, She sells seashells on a seashore But the value of these shells will fall uh, Due to the laws of supply and demand No one wants to buy shells cause there's loads on the sand Step one, must create a sense of scarcity Shells will sell much better if the people think they're rare you see Bear with me, take as many shells as you can find And hide them on an island, stockpile them high Until they're rarer than a diamond Step two, got them Make the people think that they want them Really want them Really fucking want them Hit them like Bronson Influencers, product placement Featured primetime entertainment If you haven't got a shell Then you're just a fucking waste man Three, it's Monopoly Invest inside some property Start a corporation Make a logo, do it properly Shells must sell That will be a new philosophy Swallow all your morals They're a poor man's quality Four, expand, expand, expand Clear forest, make land Fresh blood on hands Five, why just shells? Why limit yourself? She sells seashells Sell oil as well Six, on sell stock, sell Diamonds sell rocks, sell water to a fish, sell the time to a clock seven. Press on the gas, take your foot off the brakes. Then run to be the president of the United States. A big smile, make big wave, that's great. Now the truth is overrated. Tell lies out the gate. Nine polarize the people. Controversy is the game. It don't matter if they hate you, if they all say your name. Uh, he mentions shells, shell oil company, but he mentions shells and is, is, as 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 a MacGuffin that that uh, the government or whoever's uh, pulling the strings trying to convince the public that is worth something and then they create scarcity and they create prestige to that uh, item or items and and have people think that they need it. It's like a, a rant on materialism. Some women won't date a guy just because it doesn't have an iPhone. It's like the hype around certain fashionable uh, accessories that determine the worth of a man. They have been brainwashed into thinking that way. It's a shame that that's a thing, that the person's worth is measured by what he has. I'm not sure that it's meant in this way here for me, but there's something that popped into my mind when uh, when he used the shells as an example. My my brain went there. I'm not sure if Ren meant it that way is what I'm saying. But I think that he's talking about, obviously, you know, shells, shells on the beach, blah, blah, blah. But I think he also might be talking about people because the way he talks about people here, they are shells because there's nothing in there uh, with a lot of people. Um, and you can fill them with whatever you want and shells of bullets they can be used you know like a weapon or you know whatever rockets bombs whatever you want to call them but yeah. they can be used you know those shells those mortar shells or whatever um, can be used as weapons and i think that's what he's talking about people that they fill them up with whatever they need to and these people are a commodity because uh, what's that line because there's loads of on the sand people are loads yeah they're the product yeah but they don't have value because there's so many of them there's no scarcity you can get as many as you want whenever you want yeah. and use them for, for what you need to use them for and even the word loads sounds like something that talks about weapons you know yeah also the amazing line that started this sort of uh i guess format is you know uh, business economics in a nursery rhyme So he's basically saying to people, I'll put it to you in a simple way you can understand. Yeah. You know, this is how the world works. And step one is, of course, you know, supply and demand. You must create a scarcity, you know, for value. If if there's a lot of it, nobody wants it. Yeah. If there aren't any, that's what puts value on it. If he is talking about that sort of comparison in a way of whatever, or, or shells of people. And then he says... Take as many shells as you can find and hide them on an island. Stockpile them high until yeah. they're rarer than a diamond. So he's still talking about actual shells here, but it just made me think that, you know, the world's overpopulation is kind of working against us as well. Yeah, we are the only resource that's not scarce. Because there's so many of us and we are used in that way. So 
we are pretty much like those shells that he's talking about. Yeah, here. people are literally cheap. Yeah, cheap yeah. Them. And step two, got to make people think they want them, which is kind of what you were talking about, which is in the way of like branding, you know. Yeah. Like you said, an iPhone or whatever it is. I like the fact that he went and referred to a movie when he referred to Bronson, the film. Um, yeah. Hit him like Bronson. Uh, then he talks as well, you know, influences, product placement, you know, this whole thing about branding. If you haven't got a shell, then you're just a f***ing waste, man. It's happening exactly the way he says it. He's not even embellishing it. Yeah. And again, monopoly, money game, invest inside some property, start a corporation, make a logo, do it properly. Shells must sell. That's also why I think he's kind of referring to people. Yeah. Um, that will be your, your new philosophy. Swallow all your morals. They're a poor man's quality. Morals mean nothing anymore. It's all about greed. Yeah. And then it's like, again, talking about expanding, clearing forests, making land, flesh, bl fresh blood on your hands. So there he's talking about clearing land, but basically also through war. Step five, why just shells? Why limit yourself? <laughs> sell oil as well so you've used one resource that is on the planet which is people now you can use natural resources from the planet itself which is oil or anything else but then he goes to talk about guns sell stocks sell diamonds sell rocks sell water to fish sell the time to a clock so basically sell it to people who don't need it that's what he's saying he's saying or work out a way to sell to sell something you know sell time to a clock you know what i mean yeah but water to fish fish must have water to find something people will die without, like far, like pharmaceuticals, that is. That I took it to a different direction, like like life saving drugs, water to fish. But they're not really life saving, and we don't really need them. Um, you know, they they're creating that need. So maybe that's what he's talking about. Maybe you're right. Yeah. Maybe he's saying create the need with pharmaceuticals. It's really to to make yeah. people into addicts. So yeah. maybe that's kind of a, a reference to that. That's possible. And then what? Step seven: press on the gas, take your foot off the brakes. So full speed ahead, uh, run to be the president of the United States. So basically power, it's about, you know, rise in position, take over as many people as you can, sort of as far as your influence. Um, and uh, what is it next? It's eight. Big smile, mate, big wave. That's great. Now the truth is overrated. Tell lies out the gate. So gain that position, spread lies as truth. Your, you know, your influence will take it from there. It's pretty fucking dark. It is, <laughs> it's it's so dark, but it, it hits a chord because the, the sinister mm -hmm. intellectuals in power know that there's no uh, power in utopia. If they're creating a utopia, that means that there's no scarcity and they can't govern the people. That's why nobody's building a utopia because there's nothing in it for them. And that's the thing. There's no profit in it, although yeah. there is the ultimate profit, but not money-wise. Yeah, so, but not, for, yeah so, not for yeah. their interests. Yeah. Yeah, and the last one that uh, he mentioned while we were watching was uh, no, step nine or whatever, polarize the people. Controversy is the game. It don't matter if they hate you, if they all say your name. Dark. Yeah, yeah. there's no bad publicity. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. if they hate you, if they all say your name. And also uh, it addresses, not in these words, but it addresses the fallacy that people are inherently good. That's not true because we have a scoreboard. We have a history of, of the way people are behaving to prove to us time and time again that people aren't inherently good. There are good people, but what drives the world is not the power of good. It's the power of bad managing good. And again, you know, what he calls the money game, because it's all a game. Everybody's playing a game because all of this really has no real meaning. Yeah. You know, when it comes down to it, we're just a, a speck you know, in this in this grand old universe. Mm -hmm. And we seem to think that we are the shit, you yeah. know, we are all that's important. And that's what motivates us in this way to play this game, which again means yeah. nothing. And it's this vicious game. circle. Yeah. yeah. How many gold bars do you want to be buried with? It don't matter if they hate you, if they all say your name, Ten. The world is yours. Step out on the stage to a round of applause. You're a liar, cheat, a devil, a whore. And you sell seashells on the seashore. Rain, 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 rain. A storm, it comes our way. And no surprise to distorted lies. Poison in the face. But we die upon the blame, 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 blame. It's easier to blame. We point the mirror at ourselves. We're all part of this whole money game.
frames of him at the end of mm. the first one and at the beginning with the guy with the hood he had a few frames injected in this those frames that you're talking about that he used it was interesting because he used them around the time where he was showing basically all these like shows and type of entertainment that helps uh, uh, keep people from thinking and keep them under control and then he threw his own in there yeah you know that that could be him again pointing the finger at himself saying you know i'm part of this game as well yeah whether i like it or not you know i'm part of this never-ending cycle but it could also be to inject something else in there it reminded me a little bit of you know that uh scene in um in fight club you know with the uh, the quick shot of the penis Oh, the fr- the the frame, yeah, yeah, the fr- the frame, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like he's, he's trying to throw something in there because you know, again, it, there are parallels. Uh, he's talking you to know, your subconscious. With... You, you don't, yeah. you, you know, you saw something, you don't know what it was. Yeah. Here it was a bit longer than just yeah. a short frame, but yeah. still, there's there's some parallels between the theme of especially this part and you know the overall theme of Fight Club. We stopped at ten. The world is yours. Step out on a stage to a round of applause. You're a liar, a cheat, a devil, a whore, and you sell seashells on the seashore. Again, this is just really, really dark. It's it's a very uh, common tongue twister. She sells seashells on the seashore. I never thought about it. It makes no sense to sell seashells on the seashore. The seashore offers you free seashells. Why, why would anybody buy seashells on the seashore? Because it's just really supposed yeah. to come as some sort of a wordplay. Yeah. It's hard to say, you know. Yeah. Um, but here, uh, again, he, he uses yeah. it to yeah. make sense within, within what he's saying. Yeah. This one is a little bit different to the first one because I think there's less, uh, in, in a way, mix of the visual. The visual plays a part. You know, he's showing us things that we're supposed to respond to and think about. But not in the same way as the first one. The first one, the story was unfolding in front of you. It was building tension. Here, there was yeah. no tension. It was no. just like you go along with what is being said. There's a lot of very, very deep, very serious stuff there. Um, it is very, very interesting. Mm-hmm. But it is almost like a completely different genre, if you will. It's completely different to, to the first one. It's a different it's, thrill. It's, it's like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's written in, in a similar way, though. And it is yeah. fantastic. But it looks more like a sort of the, the economics you know, yeah. side of the of the of of it all, but yeah, he he definitely gets his point across. That's that's something about him that happens with everything he does. As we said, everything has meaning, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah, and and this is no no different. I I, I love this. Yeah, I said it before. As an engineer, as a scientist, he knows his skill, what he works with, and he knows how to portion it and deliver it in a way that affects best. Yeah. And the more it went along and the more that line came at the end again of 10, you know, about the shells, uh, the more I believe that he did actually think about this as uh, some sort of an analogy for people. Yeah. Vacant, malleable. Uh, and, 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 and a commodity. He, like I said, never ceases to amaze. This is, again, I'm now all itching to see part three. Yeah. As am I. <laughs> Well, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so again, thank you, Robert M. We really appreciate the support, first and foremost. And also, we appreciate you putting this in front of us because we have thoroughly enjoyed part one and now part two. And part three will come soon enough. Yeah. So stay yeah. tuned for that. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thank you, Robert M. We enjoyed reacting to it very much. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you'll get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bumped up the line, please make it through Buy Me a Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. Even now, like you look back, all the hints are there. It's like he leaves this breadcrumb trail for you to work it out. And you kind of, even when you get to the third one, you can go backwards and kind of look at it again and, and find little things because your eyes have been opened. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you more than you know. Without you, there would be no show. So please come back. We'll be here in a couple of days with the next installment. So um, yeah, stay tuned for that one because I know we are extremely excited to get to it. Yeah. Thank you again for all your support. Um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bye, Bye guys.